Hello, and thank you for joining us for worship here at Seventh and James Baptist Church. We're grateful that you're a part of our service, a part of our community of faith, and a part of our gathering still, albeit virtually. This is still the season of Lent, and of course, our theme for this season is planting seeds, and I hope and pray that you're mindful and watching out of how that may play out in worship this morning or in your own life as well. We're also watching how the fruit of the Spirit can grow in each of our lives, and this week's fruit of the Spirit is self-control, one that is maybe a little challenging for some to talk about or to think about. But there's something really empowering about thinking about self-control. We have choice in what we say and what we do, and it's a great time to be thinking about that. This is also kind of a bittersweet Sunday for us. Our minister to youth, Jonathan Balmer, this is his last Sunday with us. Uh, we are very excited for him as he goes off to serve as pastor in Mosley, Virginia at Mount Hernan Baptist Church. But certainly sad for us as we watch him go. We're grateful for his ministry to and with our youth and our youth families and our church at large. We're grateful for uh, the work that he has put in, the time he's put in, in his heart, how he has served wholeheartedly here at 7th and James. And he goes with our blessings, with our best hopes and wishes, and certainly for he and Kindle as well. Again, we're grateful that you've joined us for worship this morning, and we pray that it is meaningful for you. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come into your presence today with gratitude, blessing your holy name. Thank you, God, for your commandments. 
Thank you for calling us to an astonishing message. Thank you for opening our eyes to your wisdom and giving us hearts to hear your invitation. Thank you for your forgiveness and the injunction to forgive others even as you forgive us. Thank you for your grace, which we so desperately need. Thank you for the good news of your salvation. Thank you for your voice that fills our world and refreshes our soul. Thank you for your strength, which sustains us on our journey. Thank you, Lord, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes this morning from Exodus chapter 20. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or is that on, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or your female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 25. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Today's gospel reading comes from John, chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. When the Jews said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. 
The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? Lord our God, when you ask of us, we often demand a sign, proof, something to show us not only that what you demand is right, but really it is a demand to show us that you even have the right to ask. But we thank you that in our seasons of grumbling and wandering and protesting, you are patient with us. You guide and protect us. You seek nothing but the good, our good, and even our failings, even our wanderings, you take and work together for the good of all of those who believe in you. And you do what is good, even when we do not understand. We ask in these days that you keep us safe in body and soul, so we might be defended from those things that aim to hurt us. Yes, harm, yes, sickness, but also those things which hurt our souls, greed, envy, malice, and unholy anger at our neighbors and even ourselves. Drive those out from our lives for our good. We ask these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I've been thinking this week about our Old Testament reading from the book of Exodus. It's the story of God giving Moses the Ten Commandments, ten ways to love God and to love one another. I have a picture book to share with you today to help us think about these things together. Did you ever think about what would happen if everybody made muddy tracks? This is what would happen if everybody did. Did you ever think about what would happen if everybody pulled off a flower bud? This is what would happen if everybody did. Did you ever think about what would happen if everybody jumped in the mud? This is what would happen if everybody did. Did you ever think about what would happen if everybody slammed the door? This is what would happen if everybody did. Did you ever think about what would happen if everybody stomped and roared? This is what would happen if everybody did. Did you ever think about what would happen if everybody made a smudge? This is what would happen if everybody did. Did you ever think about what would happen if everybody made a big splash? This is what would happen if everybody did. But when there's one who leaves no muddy tracks, one who smells a flower bud, one who steps over mud, one who shuts the door, one who doesn't stomp or roar, one who doesn't smudge, one who gets a splash in her glass? Why, that's everybody. And what do you think would happen if everybody did? Sometimes it's hard to be the one who does something good. And sometimes it's hard to make good choices. God tells us that there are ways that we should live together and ways to make good choices. God tells us that we should love other people and help other people that we should share what we have and be kind to one another. Can you imagine what it would be like if everybody did? Let's say a prayer together. Dear God, help us make good choices. Amen. Please join us in our responsive Psalm, Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, 
nor are their words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Thank you. 